Alright, um, this is a Via 12 engine. I'm going to show you how to fault find the fuel system. Uh, now, um, originally, these engines have a solenoid which screws in that 17 millimeters into the uh, carburetor. I've removed the air filter here, flame arrestor it's called, with its gasket. Very important to stop drips. Um, with an 8 millimeter socket or it could be a four millimeter allen key but it helps you to remove this because you can see if there's fuel in the carburetor now um, one of the problems this engine has is that unleaded modern fuel rots the membrane in the rubber of the fuel pump which needs replacing I sell apart on buyerengines.com um, the other problem is that inside you can't see it but when you screw it out there's a rubber tip here Sometimes this is perished, cracked or missing. And the other problem we have is that um, the solenoid has become defective. You see this one is actually spinning round. If I put 12 volts across this, so I'll put earth on the body and 12 volts on that pin, you should see that glitching in and out. But there's no movement at all here because uh, it's basically burnt out. These are not available anymore but there is a manual show conversion. Now here's a good one, which I've refurbished. Um, very rare to get one of these, but you'll see when you put 12 volts on, it pulls the piston back, and in reality, you just have a 12 volt wire going to your choke button, and the earth is the engine. So if this is loose, it won't work, um, or rotating. But um, what I've done on this engine, quite sensibly, because you can't get these solenoids anymore, is I fitted a manual choke conversion which I have specially made and this just screws in, you have to loosen the carburetor this screws in with its adapter and it, it means that you can now pull start the engine on a flat battery which you could never do before and you can take this knob off if you want to to extend this short cable and put your own loop on where you could put a wire pulled from the cockpit or somewhere um, So. I'm still working on a longer cable, but at the moment this is a nice solution. It's got the rubber tip, all the parts in there. It's just a straight replacement for the electric solenoid. And um, the, now I want to show you about the fuel. If this um, if this rubber membrane in the pump has perished, it's not going to lift fuel up into the carburetor properly. So what you need to do is to carefully, without damaging the gasket, take off the fuel cover and have a look in there to see what the fuel level is like. Now what you should find is it's 18 millimeters below the top of the surface. Have a look to see that the pin which is allowing the fuel in is dropping. This one is under gravity. It's not a stuck needle so the fuel can get in. And you should find that you can just bob this float around with your finger which means it's not punctured and sunk. If you have a punctured float, I can supply those as well. Now there's some little, um, I'll zoom in here on this carburetor. There's some little um, vertical strips inside the bowl cast in and the fuel is about five millimeters below there. But if you look at the actual level of the fuel, not the float, you can see this is 18 millimeters below the top of the thing and that is correct that's how they should run if it's too low it's going to run too lean and you'll find that this mixture tuning screw is more than a one turn out if it's too high because it's flooding it's probably because this needle is defective and leaking and allowing too much fuel in so having established all this and this engine is now fixed and correct it did have a bad fuel pump um, membrane and gasket which I fixed I've also put a stretched o-ring around this lip to stop leaks and we've now got this engine running lovely with the manual choke conversion as well so this engine will not only start but it will run correctly in tune it's um, basically ready to go out and uh, I'll just demonstrate this starting up if I can as you see uh, another trick is um, I'll zoom out you'll see I've got this uh, I'm running this uh, 
from a jam jar, which I've secured to the bench, so there's a screw into the bench here, but there's a jam jar with fuel in it, and the purpose of that is if there was any splits or joins in this pipe that could be allowing air to come in, it wouldn't be a fair test of this pump, but I've loosened this joint here, and with the engine just cranking over, there's fuel bursting out of this joint when I've got it loose, so that proves that the pump works. If there was any uh, joints and lines, it may be caused those, so I've eliminated them by running it from a jam jar. It's particularly important if you are using an outboard tank or a tank which has got a connection above fuel level, because if it leaks above fuel level, the air goes in in preference to the fuel, which is heavier, and it sucks air bubbles right down the fuel line into your pump diaphragm, and the valves don't work very well, you'll have low efficiency from the pump. So please avoid any kind of fuel system with a tank that has a connection on top which isn't 100% airtight, not fuel tight, airtight is even tighter. And I'm testing here to eliminate that as well. So here we go, let's um, start this up. And that's how they should start, on the button. Stop the to stop it, I'm simulating the kill switch by making a connection between the points wire and the earth. But a VAR12 is a lovely starter. One tap. See here. I've got water coming out the exhaust, as it should do. Never start one of these engines without turning the seacock on, making sure the impeller's wet. Just stop this. Other important thing to know is all the VIA engines will flood, the VIA 7 and 12. If you leave the seacock on and you're turning the engine over for more than a minute, you need to turn the seacock off. Because the impeller's wet, it means it won't burn out until the engine's running now. But if you keep turning the impeller when the engine's not running, there's no exhaust gas to blow the water out over the gooseneck in your boat and out into the water. What will happen is it will be pumping water into the exhaust but it won't be blown over the top of the gooseneck, it will just slowly fill up until it gets to the level of the piston go into the main bearing. So you don't want to do that. If you haven't got your engine started after a minute of cranking when the impeller is wet, turn the seacock off until the engine's running. Anyway, this is the Bing Carburetor. I have all the spares for this. If you want float needles, if you want floats, if you want choke conversions, if you want the jets, if you want the, the rubber membrane and valves for the fuel pump, I've got them all. Just go on to viaengines.com and uh, you can email me from there as well, any advice. I ship all over the world. Thanks for watching.